worship today. Um, all our singers got arthritis. I mean, uh, what do you call it? Except for Dre and, and Gray, or Jenna. But he got it when he can't sing and talk. Okay. <laughs> okay, I want to, we're going to do a, uh, kind of conclude the thing about being a giant killer, and I want to talk about the profile of a giant killer, but before I do that, before I get into the Bible study, I want to give you a little something that somebody um, uh, talked to me uh, Sunday afternoon, they gave me a call, and and uh, they were asking me about, you know, what did I think about what's going on in the world, and and they said, are we losing our freedom? And I said, no, we, we don't lose our freedom at all. You lose it because you lose it. That's, uh, it's no one's fault. Um, I believe in Galatians chapter 5, when you read verses 1 through 12, you don't have to open that up now, but uh, if you have some time, read that. Uh, it talks about our freedom. Um, and one of the things I've learned is that uh, we don't know what freedom is or what it's like until we have been slaves, right? But in reality, we have been slaves. We have been slaves at one time or another in our lives. We were slaves to this world. And then Jesus came and set us free, and now we have freedom. Um, Jesus' uh, whole mission was, was to free us. That was his mission, was to free all of us. Um, there's a scripture that says, Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. Do you realize that this is one of the most important tasks that we have as followers of Jesus Christ? And what it is, is to simply stand firm. He's saying what my mother used to tell us when we would go grocery shopping. She says, there was just something about going grocery shopping with our moms. I don't know what it was. There was just something about going there, you know. Uh, but when we were all going, you got to remember, there was me and six girls, six sisters, all right, and they were all little. And so this is what my mom would always tell us. Uh, whatever you do, do not get lost. Stay close. Don't wander off. That was my mama's rules if we were going to go grocery shopping with her. So one of the biggest tasks in Christian life is to guard against wandering off from freedom. That, that has been won for us through the saving work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you're free. Now stand in that freedom and don't wander off. Um, I believe that there are born again. I, I want you to grab this if you can, all every single one of you. And if, and if it doesn't apply for you, tell somebody else what I'm about to say here. Because I believe there are born-again believers that have not experienced freedom like it was intended to be lived. Many are still in the yoke of slavery. Chains have never really been taken away. And I'm going to tell you the reason why. Is that somebody's phone? Better be Jesus. That's all I know. Why, why do so-called born-again Christians still having problems not living in freedom? Why are some still chained up? Because I, I talking to people and then seeing way some people live, some people are just still chained up by just the way they walk, the way they talk, the way they, they think. They're still chained up. And, uh, and I've have the reason why. Are you ready for it? Okay. Sally was married to Bill for many years. One day, Bill dies of a heart attack. And several years later, Sally remarried a man named Jack. 
Now, Jack was different in many ways than Bill was. Bill didn't like to eat breakfast, but Jack liked to start his day with a big country breakfast. Bill didn't care if the house was kept clean, and Jack wanted the house to be neat and tidy. After Jack and Sally had been married for a few years, Jack was beginning to get a, a little bit aggravated with Sally. He came down the stairs hoping one day to find things different, but the house was messy, and he went into the kitchen hoping to smell bacon and eggs and potatoes and some tortillas cooking on the stove. But he only found a cup of coffee and it was cold. When Jack voiced his dissatisfaction with the situation, Sally said, well, that's the way Bill liked things. And then Jack sat her down and said, Sally, Bill is dead. You're my wife now. You have to stop living like you are still married to Bill. So what I want to say to you is that you marry Jesus. Quit acting like you're still married to the world. That's why some people don't experience total freedom. You're married to Jesus, but you act like you're still married to the world. That's over. You have new freedoms now. So share that with somebody. I thought that was uh, something I thought about the other day. And uh, Anyways, so... I want to uh, share something with you that I pray they'll bless you. The, the profile of a giant killer. How do we kill these giants? The giants of anger, the giants of restoration, uh, I mean, uh, uh, rejection, uh, the giants of all kinds. You, you, you all have your own personal giants. How do we kill them? And what is the profile? What is the characteristics of a giant killer? Well, there's Eight of them, real quick, I want to share with you. Okay? I'm going to, when I say eight of them, oh my, this is going to be a long lesson. No, no, I'm going to give them real quick. Right? <clears throat> so tonight I want, to, I want to encourage you and share with you, and I pray that it will challenge you, and it will motivate you to become a giant killer in your life. But before you and I can become giant killers, you need to know that there are some things needed to become a giant killer. Is there an order? I, I believe so, and this is number one. In order to be a giant killer, you have to learn how to be submitted. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, if you want to go with me to 1 Samuel, verses 17 through 18. If you read chapter 16, you will read of the anointing of David to become king of Israel. And there at the anointing ceremony, was David's father, Jesse. You all know that, right? When David was anointed by Samuel, Jesse, the father of David, was there when he heard and saw Samuel anointing David to be the king of Israel. Okay? Now, we all agree with that. Okay, we all know that's there. Jesse knew that David was going to be king one day. Okay, how do you say Jesse in Spanish? Jesse sabía que su hijo David un día va a ser rey. Is that Jesus? Chuy. Él sabía. Porque él estaba ahí cuando Samuel lo anointed, ungió with oil. So he knew, Jesse knew that David one day was going to be king. But if you go to 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 17 through 18, Jesse gets up and he's worried about his other boys that are in the war. So he decides, I'm going to get a hold of David and tell David to take some food to his brothers so they can eat. So this is what he says to him. But he addresses David as a boy. He said to him, boy, go and give this bread and cheese to your brothers who are at war. 
Jesse treats David as a pizza delivery boy. David knowing that he one day is going to be king did not re disrespect his father's wishes. He could have said, wait a minute. You're calling me boy? I'm the future king of Israel. This job of being a delivery boy is beneath me. Jesse wasn't showing any re respect for his son who was going to be the future king of Israel. But what I love about David, he didn't re disrespect his dad. You know, one of the things I really liked, uh, there's a couple of guys. Brother Gus, when Brother Gus was with us, he is, was an usher uh, in, in our church. And I believe he was a deacon as well. And if you knew Gus when he was here, uh, he had his tie on on Sundays, and he would get all dressed up. But the first thing that he would do, he would come early to church. First thing he would do, he would go to the back and get a shovel and get a poo, -poo scooper. That's what he would do. So then he would come to the front lawn and pick up all the stuff that the chunk of dogs left. Okay? Picked up all the poop. You know, he had his tie on, his nice shoes on, and he would do that without even being told. In fact, I didn't even tell him, hey, bro, can I have somebody? I didn't do that in a meeting. Can I have an usher or a deacon that can come and clean up the poop? He automatically did it on his own. All right? Because he did that, Jerry saw him doing that. So Jer when, J when Gus left, then Jerry picked that up. And he would go, in fact, he even bought a special shovel and a special scooper uh, for that. Because this is for the ministry of picking up dog poop. I'm so glad that these two guys did not have the attitude and say, wait a minute, this job is beneath me. They did it anyway. You see, giant killers are submitted to authority. Did you know that God will not use anybody who does not respect authority? In fact, all of us need to be under authority. We were all created to be under authority. That's why I'm going to say something. I hope you don't get mad, but I do not believe in non-denominational churches. The presence of God may be there, and I'm not saying it's not. But see, I don't like when the leadership says, I don't like no one to tell me what to do. And, and, and that bothers me. Because we were all created to be under somebody. All of us were. I'm under Brother Jesse Galindo. I'm under Brother Steve, and I'm under Brother uh, Angel, because I give them permission to be over my life, to check how I'm living, what I'm doing, what I'm watching, what I'm hearing. Uh, these guys get on me really bad. But I don't, I, when they tell me something, I don't yell at them. I say, who do you think you are to tell me that? You know, I'm the pastor. No, 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 no. People that are going to be giant killers are people that are not afraid to be under authority. Period. Okay? We got that. Number two. Giant killers know how to exercise the whole body. You find that in 1720. They are disciplined. Giant killers are disciplined. They are disciplined reading the word. They are disciplined in praise. And they are disciplined in worship. I've learned this, that lazy people don't kill giants. They learn to coexist with them. Yeah. The same discipline that you have for the body is the same discipline you need for your spirit. And let me <laughs> share this with you. Uh, there's a young man that I knew many, many years ago that was in love with working out. This guy loved to work out. His torso was unbelievable. Beautiful torso. He had a washboard stomach. I mean, ripples. And it was hard as steel. His arms were big and massive. His shoulders were wide. They looked like wings. 
that even his chin was chiseled. I don't know how you chisel your chin. Even his earlobes had muscles. So one day we all went fishing. All the guys went fishing. And fishing, you remember Rick? He took off his shirt. Not Rick. This guy. Took off his shirt. And all of us guys that were there, we looked at it and we all said, yikes, I'm not taking off my shirt. So we all decided to go swimming. right? So he slipped off his sweatpants off. And to my surprise, his legs were the skinniest things I've ever seen in my life. He looked deformed. I realized that he disciplined himself to work up on his upper body, but he didn't discipline himself to work on his lower body. And here's the thing. We discipline ourselves to look good physically, but lack to discipline ourselves to look good spiritually. So if you're going to be a giant killer, you got to make sure that the outside looks just as good as the inside. Because you're going to freak out people, because then you're going to look deformed. And so after I saw him in the water, in his skinny leg, big, muscular, boom, but skinny legs, he didn't scare me anymore. I, I wanted to hit him and see if he can take me down. You know? The third thing is this. Giant killers in 1720 of, of 1 Samuel, they know how to get up. Now, when David, now if you, if you know, read your story, you'll find out when David arrived and he went to the army, they were in the ditch. The Bible says they were like in a ravine. In un... Uh, and they were in a ravine. And, uh, and he heard the taunts of Goliath. Entonces, oyó el gigante gritando cosas. And I've, I just put this down. The enemy will show up at your lowest point in your life only to intimidate you. That's all he's going to do. Just to, the enemy cannot do nothing to you. He can only intimidate you. So you got to learn how to get up. The giant was only nine feet tall, but if you are in a ditch, it looks like he's 19 feet tall. I don't know how long low that ditch was, but when you look up, this is a massive giant that you're looking at. But if you stand up, the giant does not look that tall. The devil is not that impressive if you stand up to him. He said, oh, el diablo me agarró, el diablo. Uh, in fact, uh, Brother Eli and Sister Liz used to sing a song called El, el Diablo. Uh, what was the name of it? El Diablo? He, is that what it was? He, they just sing it in Spanish. Oh, okay, there you go. So it was, uh, he can't do you nothing. He can taunt you. Uh, but when you stand up to him, he's not that impressive. Because, not because you're able to do anything, but because you're using the weapons that God's given you. So, uh, giants know how to get up. Number four, verse 20 again. Giant killers know how to shout. Ellos que pueden matar gigantes saben cómo gritar. Anybody a yowler in here? I'm a yowler? Am I a yowler? Okay. Kaylee, am I a yowler? Sometimes? No one, am I the only yowler here? Okay, Norma, you're a yowler? Okay. I know, I know Patty's a yowler. Here's the thing. A giant killer, you need to learn how to shout. You need to learn how to shout. Necesitan aprender cómo gritar. Now, now I'll tell you why. Because you and I cannot be silent. No podemos ser sal uh, uh, silencio. There has to be a shout of triumph. I believe the shout 
of the Lord is amongst us. That's what the word song we sing. The Lord, the shout of the Lord is, not your shout, but the shout of the Lord is amongst us. That's his shout. He's shouting, and if he's shouting, then you can't, sh- then, then you can't be quiet. Especially if you're winning a victory. If you overcome something in your life, you got, you got to remember, he's shouting, and you need to shout. See, the world, the world has its cue cards that say, uh, louder, louder. We go to Dodger Stadium, and, and they're at, on the intercom, or there'll be one, somebody, there's a guest visitor there, and, and they'll say, uh, shout louder, shout louder, shout louder. I mean, it's telling you to shout, and then you, you hear everybody shouting louder. Everybody's shouting loud. The world has cue cards that say louder, 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 but the church has her cue card saying quieter, quieter, quieter. No hacen muya en la casa. Don't make noise in here. You got to have class. Somos una gente de orden. Did you know that you're out of order when you don't shout? When the people of Israel were going around, and we all know this, going around the city of Jericho, God told him, on the seventh, when you hear the trumpet, I want you guys to be quiet. Right? No? What did he tell him? He told him to shout. 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 I don't know what they were shouting, pero estaban gritando. They were shouting. But in the church, we, no, we got to be quiet. In Acts chapter 2, verse 2, the Bible said, declares that there was a sound of heaven that came down. Había un grito desde los cielos que se bajó sobre los 120 que estaban ahí. There was a shout of heaven. I wonder what that sound was. Who was shouting? Was Jesus shouting? Was the angels shouting? Was the Holy Spirit shouting? Who was shouting? Well, it says a, a sound of heaven came down. Probably angels. You know what? what they're, you, you know, I think you know what they were shouting. I think were angels, but I, this is what I think they were shouting, Andrea. I want what you're gonna get. I want what you're gonna get. I think they were shouting that. We are all different with different backgrounds, but we still need to learn how to shout. You got to learn how to shout, and it's not out of order when you. See, the Bible says that for, for 40 días, este gigante estaba gritando. For 40 days, this giant was shouting in the valley. His words had been echoing in the valley. But look, si, si estudian esta historia bien, if you study the story right, you'll find that, that the, the valley that, that the giant was shouting in, look who it belonged to. It belonged to Judah. It was Judah's valley. It was the valley of Elah, which is Judah's valley. This giant has been shouting insults for 40 days in a valley that does not belong to him. He's been shouting words of of depression, words of discouragement, words of anxiety, words of hatred, words of defeatism, words of low self-esteem, words of feeling worthless, words of making you feeling like you are nobody, words of damnation, words of condemnation, words that say you are not going to make it. But I'm here to tell you something. You need to jump into your valley because this valley belongs to you and shout words of praise, words of worship, words of encouragement, words of healing, words of, uh, uh, of, of no condemnation, words that soothe, words that bring healing to the soul and to the spirit. It's time that you need to shout in your own valley. This is our valley. When we gather to worship, this is our valley. So what are you being quiet for? This is your valley. I'll guarantee you there's people that come to our church that the enemy into church, this is our valley, but the church, the enemy, they're hearing the enemy shout at them. Keep your mouth shut. You're in a classy place. No noise. Don't make no noise. Don't make no noise. And we listen to that. Yeah. 
don't know about you, when we, when we sing that song, uh, Sing God, oh my gosh. You did it then, you're going to do it now. Push, we should shout. Don't wonder if you're not singing the song. You should be shouting when we're singing so many songs. You know. Number five, giant killers look for the rewards. You find that in 1725. Three times David asked, what was the reward if somebody killed the giant? Great riches, he would get a daughter from Saul, and no more taxes for the rest of their life. I can go for that last one. I don't know about the first two. I want you to know something, that there is a reward. What's our reward for shouting in our own valley? What is our reward? See, there's a reward for us. You say, what is it? Streets of gold? Walls of jasper? Gates of pearl? No more sorrow? No more tears? No more pain? No more hurts? No more disappointments? No more discouragement? No more cancer? No more diabetes? No more heart disease? And no more Alzheimer's? Whew! The problem is that the enemy has taken heaven off the table and has the world focusing on the now. Enjoy the moment now. That's what he wants to enjoy it now. But in reality, he doesn't want you to know what you're going to get if you are faithful to the end. Look, our time is almost up. Nuestro tiempo ya mero está aquí. It's almost here. Whether you believe this or not, it's almost here. I want to say we probably won't live another 10 years. Jesus is coming. And what are we going to get? We should be saying, okay, Lord, what am I going to get if I remain faithful? You're going to live with me. You get to worship me. You get to live for eternity. And you may say, what's that? You'll never, ever, 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 ever die. You can come and worship for 20,000 years. I mean, it's unbelievable. We, we don't, our minds cannot really comprehend what we are going to get if we're faithful to the end. Our minds can't phantom that. But the enemy doesn't want you to know what you're going to get if you are faith, faithful to the end. So learn how to slay your giant. Get rid of him. Number six, giant killers do what is right in the dark. Oh. Chapter 17, verse 34. <clears throat> there is a call for character, not uh, charisma. David told Saul, when no one was looking, this is what he said, when no one was looking, I killed a bear and a lion. That's what he said. When no one was looking, I killed a bear and a lion. I don't know about you, but I want to kill a lion and a bear while everybody's watching me. Wouldn't you? So people can say, wow. But he said, while no one was looking, I killed a bear and a lion. See, a bear and a lion. Now, let me say this to you. You have to learn to destroy your own personal enemies. If you can't destroy your own personal enemies, I'm not talking about another human being. Please, don't be killing. I don't want someone want cousins and brothers dead here tomorrow. No, no. I'm saying... If you can't destroy your own personal enemies, then how do you expect to destroy God's enemies? See, God is watching how you handle your own personal enemies. Don't coexist with them. I don't know about you, I got enemies, but I, but I have a lot less enemies. In the 50-some years I've been serving the Lord, I had a lot of them, and then some came along while I was in my, in my growth, but there's a lot of them that are dead. I don't want to coexist with them. I don't want to live with them no more. Because i got a job to do. So if I can't kill my own personal hang-ups, then how am I going to kill God's enemies? Wow. So God is watching how you handle your own personal enemies. Number seven. 
giant killers don't have two different outfits. You find that in verse 38 to 39. Don't be that believer that has an outfit for Monday through Saturday and a different one for Sunday. See, Saul was trying to get David to have two outfits. See, the devil wants you to have two outfits. Get what you want Monday through Saturday, but when it comes to church Sunday, put on this nice outfit. You've got to have the same outfit. That's all I'm going to say on that. Number eight, giant killers are determined. You find that in verse 40. Many people think, now watch this, all right, and I, and I hope this is, this is going to throw your theology away if you believe this. Many people think that they get spiritual, when they get spiritual, and they say about David that he picked up, picked up five smooth stones, one for Goliath and the other one for the four brothers that Goliath had. That's, that's good preaching. That's good preaching. But that's not why he picked up five stones. He picked up five stones just in case he missed. All right? Don't, don't get all spiritual and say, oh, no, the, he got one for God and then God, because we all know he had four brothers. And he got to, to kill them. In fact, he never killed any of those. There was other, his mighty men killed some of the rest of the giants that existed. No, he picked up five stones because he thought he was going to miss. But he was determined. See, giant killers are determined. If the stone of fasting don't work, then I'll pick up the stone where two or three are gathered in his name. And if that don't work, then I have a stone called praise. And if that don't work, I have a stone called worship. If that don't work, then I have a stone called the word. See, a setback is not going to deter me or discourage me. I'm determined to see things through. It's not that there's a lack of faith. There was no lack of faith because he picked up five stones. A lot of people say, oh, he, if it was for that, then he had a lack of faith. No, don't ever say that. He said, maybe, maybe pray, praise ain't going to work, but I got to worship. I got a stone called worship. If that don't work, then I got to worship a stone called fasting. If that don't work, then I got a stone called prayer. But be determined. Be determined, no matter what. Number nine, did I say eight? Oh, there's nine. There's nine, okay. Giant killers know how to get the job done. Ellos saben como hasta el fin. See, we knew, we, we've heard it over and over again, but Eliab puts David down, and then he tells him, where's your scrawny little sheep? You will always have critics. The city that says to you, you can't do it. But giant killers know how to get the job done. David knocks out Goliath, okay? So, David viene y, y corre y uh, al gigante y lo mata. Okay, lo, lo, not, it doesn't kill him. He, he hits him with the, in la pierna, in la, in la cabeza, y lo desmaya. Desmaya? I say that word? Knocks him out. See, a lot of us are satisfied just knocking out the giant. You got to finish the job. Because if you don't finish the job, then it's useless. He went, cuando estaba caído el gigante, you could hear, see him breathing. Todavía estaba, uh, su corazón todavía estaba, was pumping. Y él, David dijo, no, necesito acabar el trabajo. Sacó la espada. And cut his head off. See, he, he said, I can't let him live. I can't let, he can't coexist with me no more. He violated my valley. He violated where this is our place. I can't allow him to live here no more. So, boom, he cuts off his head. Okay? So, after they chase the enemy away, they gather around David. Se juntan alrededor de David después cuando se and when they gather around David, now David's right there at the body of Goliath, and they come back and they gather around David. 
And you know what David does? He reaches down, he levanta la cabeza. He picks up Goliath's head. Can you imagine the blood's coming down? I mean, sangrando todo. And he puts it in a stick. Got un palo and jams it up wherever. And then he takes it to the house. Uh, I believe I want to figure out what house it was. Well, he took it to we're going to call it the house of Israel to remind Israel that the enemy no longer has authority over them. Maybe we should go and I want to ask Uriah to make us little heads of giants and name that giant lust, lying, dishonesty, uh, whatever, whatever giant you're dealing with. And when you kill it, put it on a stick and bring it to the house. To remind you that this giant is dead. To remind you that this giant can no longer have authority over your life. So when I was, now, now picture this with me. David está aquí, levanta la cabeza de, de Goliath, he picks up Goliath's head, and, and who's watching him? Who's there in the crowd? Eliab. Eliab, the one that said, what are you doing here, little punk? You're so conceited, you think you want to make us all look bad. What are you doing here? All that shuts up. See, giant slayers know how to shut the people's mouths up. So, <clears throat> so David, I can imagine David picking up that head in front of the entire army of Israel. This is what David says. Don't you ever come into my house and trash talk to my family ever again. You piece of crapola. You fat piece of nothing. You ugly son of a, you will no longer have authority over my children. You will no longer have authority over my marriage, over my finances, over my health, over my city, my church, my school, and my friends. Yeah. Woo! That's what he's saying. And he goes, let's go take it. And let's put his head. And let's let the world know this is what a determined giant killer can do. So today, you want your freedom? You want to live in freedom? Then become a giant killer. Get rid of all the giants that are messing your life up. Until then, you will never set no one free. Because you haven't been free. So for the, all of us have been saved for many, many years, and we're still love, married to the world, it's time to, let's, let's get rid of that. Let's live in freedom the way God intended for you and I to live. Amen? Father, I worship you and I praise you. I honor you and I glorify you. I thank you for who you are. Teach me, God, to be a giant slayer. Teach me all the things that I need to learn so I can tell the whole world that giants don't rule over me no more. I love you and I'm going to give you the glory and the honor. In your precious name we pray. Amen, amen.